Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship. We are God's household called out of darkness into marvelous light by the architect of creation. As lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and straight followers, we are God's people created in the divine image. We are God's called to give of ourselves. Would you please rise as you're able for our opening song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, High and Lifted Up.
today on a very special occasion to give you gratitude, to give you praise, to give you all the honor for calling every single one of this to this place that we call Metropolitan Community Church. This day on our anniversary, we are particularly grateful and humbled that you are the one who saw us in our hour of need. You are the one who saw us in the places where we were scattered in the world and you brought us back to this tribe these buildings, these places, so that we had a home where we can worship you in truth and in honesty. So this morning we express gratitude and we look forward to being in your presence. So be with us now. We pray this in your many names. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. First of all, I want to welcome you to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. It is an incredibly awesome place to be in community and to worship together. And I know we have uh, guests among us today uh, because it's Anniversary Sunday, and so we would love to just welcome you if you're visiting from other MCCs or other places around the world. What we like to do, if it is your first time with us, is just thank you for being here and choosing to worship with us. And identify yourself by raising your hand if you're comfortable so that we can celebrate you. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> So please receive these welcome packets from our ushers um, to get to know us a little bit better and make your informed heart and mind decision of if this is a spiritual home for you. So in addition to that, I would love to welcome our online worshipers around the world. We know that this is a great morning to gather together. As our ushers pass through the sanctuary here with the attendance tablets, we would invite you to check in by signing your name and letting us know if there's anything we can do to be of service for you as ministers. You can approach anybody on the dais today if you would like some care. And there's also an opportunity to check in online and open up the bulletin to follow along with us today. We do have quite a few events coming up in the near future at Founders. It feels like maybe for a little while we were floating along on autopilot, kind of reorienting ourselves. And now we've got a, a, a packed schedule, so I'd encourage you to look at your bulletins. And um, the things I would like to note briefly here are that next Sunday is the Los Angeles AIDS Walk. Founders MCC does have a team. There's an opportunity for you to join the team and walk with them or donate money to support uh, finding a cure for AIDS. And um, that's hosted by Pause Spirit and another group. Do you remember who's the other co-host? Just Paw Spirit. Okay, awesome. So Paw Spirit will be hosting that this year. And then on the 17th of October, we have a congregational forum, which will be a time of conversation, questions and answers, as we prepare to have our annual congregational meeting, which will happen October 25th. And the other important aspect of October 25th uh, for the congregational meeting is that we have only one worship service that Sunday. So the 9 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, and the 1.30 service will all worship together at 10 a.m., so don't come at 9 unless you just love being early. Don't come at 11 unless you love being late. Uh, but come at 10 so we can all worship together as one church before our congregational meeting at noon. And then also coming up later this month, Bayanihan is hosting their annual bingo event. And all the funds that they raise from that very fun, um, highly, pop, uh, highly attended event it goes to supporting MCC churches in the Philippines. And so if you're able to attend... Uh, I hear that there's $25 to get the bingo cards, and the grand prize is uh, something like a 42-inch flat-screen TV. So it's worth the raffle if you have a chance to attend the event. And then also, um, ICM, our Spanish-speaking congregation, is hosting a Halloween party this year at the church down in the fellowship hall, the lower level. There's going to be food, entertainment, costumes, etc. So um, if you have any interest in having a really good time, I'd recommend that you attend that. And then in November, these are just the surface announcements, we start <laughs> preparing for and serving our annual Thanksgiving Feast of Love with Gay and Lesbian Elder Housing, and we team up with uh, Temple Kol Ami and the Gay and Lesbian Center to put on this event for our seniors that live at Triangle Square. So, that's awesome. Two more things of import. Uh, we've been sharing with you, Reverend Elder Don Eastman and I, the survey that got sent out to assess the congregation and find out what are our cumulative beliefs, values, and spiritual practices. This Wednesday, coming up the 7th at noon, is the deadline to uh, fill out your survey. It takes about 15 minutes, 30 if you're wordy in your comments. 
And um, so far, we've already received just under 100 surveys, which is really remarkable because we were expecting somewhere around 50. Statistically, 50 would have been a good mark. So you guys are overachievers, thank you. And really looking forward to reporting some of those results this coming Saturday where we have our first of three holy conversations, these congregational conversations about where we're going as a church. So on that note, I have um, something to share with you from Reverend Elder Don Eastman. It's a written statement, so just bear with me as I read through it. Reverend Don says, on a personal note, I need to share with you that this week I've been diagnosed with a very painful medical condition, an inguinal hernia, which requires prompt medical treatment, including surgery. Therefore, I will remain at my home in Florida until the treatment can be completed. Please remember me in your prayers. I will return to Los Angeles as soon as possible and will keep you posted on my progress. In the meantime, I will continue to work closely and daily with our staff, board of directors, volunteer clergy, and lay ministry leaders to assure that we have strong continuity of all our ministries, administration, and governments at Founders. Thanks to advances in information technology, it is possible to keep closely connected and collaborative, although we are in different physical locations. Founders MCC has so many gifted leaders and congregants. In this challenging time of transition, I believe we can focus on our strengths, congregation, uh, I'm sorry, our strengths to continue building the vibrant, inclusive, and progressive congregation God is calling us to be. So keep him in your prayers. He's watching right now. Hello in Florida. And um, the, the impact that we'll have on our congregational conversation on the 10th is that we'll have a guest facilitator instead of Reverend Don Eastman. It's Reverend Wanda Floyd from MCC of Las Vegas, who has been an interim pastor and has specialized training in these things. So she'll also be preaching here next Sunday after the Saturday meeting. So we'll get to have some time with her. And without any further ado, what we're here for today. First of all, we're here to give thanks and praise to God through whom we have our life and our being. And second, we're here to celebrate 47 years of ministry to and by bisexual, transgender, lesbian, called and anointed followers of Christ and beyond. We celebrate justice work around the world, and we have an honored guest preacher among us today. Not only has he been a voice crying out in the wilderness for marginalized children of God, but he has been a prophet, a leader, an advocate, a pastor, and a friend to many. His humility and holy boldness has put him in the presence of great leaders to speak a liberating gospel. His faith has made him the target of great acts of evil against humanity and the benefactor of generous amounts of God's favor and grace. Not only has he led social change all around the world, but his faithfulness to God's purpose for his life has been the catalyst for salvation and redemption to so many a mistreated heart, giving us our God and our lives back. So please help me welcome the founder of the Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches Worldwide that started right here in Los Angeles, our guest preacher for Founders Day, Reverend Troy Perry. So since most of you are already risen, let's go ahead and greet each other with the peace of Christ and we'll continue in worship. Feel free to stay standing. Um, I just have a quick announcement before we do the scripture reading. Um, from the board, we wanted to let you know that if you have a debt uh, application for running for the board, pastoral search committee, or um, to be a lay delegate, your, your application is due by October 11th. Okay, so not today, but next week. So you have another seven days if you don't have it already completed. October 11th. If you haven't completed, please feel free to give it to myself, Mike, Michael Sutherland, um, Jenny Nichols is here, as well as uh, Stefan, or any of the staff, as well as Tracy Adams. You can give it to any one of us. We'll make sure that it gets to the right place. Okay, thank you.
A scripture reading today, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 9, the King James Version. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, have built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. If you love the Lord this morning, would you say amen? amen? What a joy to be in the house of God today. I want to tell you that uh, I noticed they moved downstairs, but there was a couple sitting up in the balcony, and I loved it when I looked up and thought, well, we've got folks in the balcony this morning. Amen. And uh, how I praise God for all of you who are here. I want you to do something for me. I want you to thank the choir and these musicians who normally... Or at the 11 o'clock service. All of you. Amen. I want to thank everybody in this church who does something for this church. Amen. All of you who are involved, I praise God for you every day. I want to uh, tell you that it's, I talked to Reverend Don Eastman uh, yesterday. Uh, Don called me and told me that he is having surgery this coming week or next week. We're not sure which one it's going to be yet, but be in prayer for him. So please know that. And uh, he, I wanted to mention to you. Also, I wanted to tell you that uh, how thankful I am for all you laity, all you laity that preach. I'm telling we, we have lay people in this preach, in this church that can preach as well as any of we clergy. Amen. And I'll tell you, you've just had two of them. You had Larry, amen, who preached on the Wizard of Oz. And of course, he played Dorothy, amen, you know. <laughs> and I love Stephen this last week, spiritual CPA. Uh, would you give him a great big hand? He's here this morning, both of them, for preaching for us. And I want to quickly give you one scripture this morning that wasn't read, just so you get my point. Amen. In everything give thanks, 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want to tell you this morning three things about revelations that I received when I first founded Metropolitan Community Church. First revelation that I received, and it was for me, and then God reminded me it was for everybody. That first revelation that I received was God loved me as a gay man. And if God loved me, then God had to love a other LGBTA, TA, pardon me, <laughs> blah, 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 people, amen. <laughs> forgive me this morning, amen. I'm having a little rough time, amen here, so forgive me. That first service of Metropolitan Community Church, the reason I'm telling you this is I have Kosovo Television uh, that are going to interview me this coming week. And uh, on the largest, they have the most watched television station in the world per capita of any nation. It's a small nation. They have one a channel, so everybody has to watch the channel. Amen. <laughs> And they have it, they're going to have what I say translated into Serbian and Albanian, the two languages of that country. And so please pray for me that God will use that. Now they want me to talk about gay rights, and I can always do that. But I let them know I'm wearing my collar, amen. I want the people there to know there are uh, people who are involved in religion uh, that loves them. And so please pray for me as I do that. But that... That thing that God revealed to me was so important to me. I've got to tell you that first service. The first scripture that I used in that service of Metropolitan Community Church was from the book of Job. And I've got to tell you that I preached on be true to you. And I told the story of Job. Job said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust God. I've got to tell you something at that first service. Troy Perry did not have all the answers. Amen. That's not how God gives a revelation. Amen. I didn't have the answers, but I knew one revelation. God loved me. And if God loved me, then God had to love you and you and you and you. Amen. Whoever you are, that God had to love you. I always stop and I look at that first service and I thank God for it and how far we've come. I'm thankful this last week I watched the Pope's visit. Amen. I'm retired. I said at home I wouldn't let the bird, our parrot, discourage me. I wouldn't let my partner discourage me. I said I want to hear everything that's said and done. And I heard some good, wonderful things. Amen. And I'll tell you at the end of it, when all at once, uh, they said, oh, by the way, he had a meeting with Ken, Kim Davis. Uh, you know who it is, the clerk from Kentucky that won't give out our wedding license. Uh, immediately, all of us got upset, up in arms. And then we heard what the Vatican said, but wait a minute, he didn't have a special meeting with him. The special meeting where he met was with two gay friends, a man who had him as a college professor. I stop and I look at that, and you know what? Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson was at the White House. She was one of the 11,000 people invited to the White House to welcome the Pope to America. So we were there too, amen. I want to let you know that. The other thing about Metropolitan Community Church and God loving gay people, I, I had to say over and over to them, for five years, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. That's all I could preach for five years. God loves you because new people kept coming. God loves you. I want you to know it. Guess what? God loves you. Amen. There was a time in our history, too, that was so funny. Uh, we had more visitors than we had members at first. We had a very small membership, but the visitors kept growing. And my goodness, I remember when we had took in our first group of members, not the original 12 who attended the first service, but our first group of members where we took in members, 36 people came forward out of a crowd of 200. Amen. 36 people, they were there. They believed what I said. God loves me. They just said, 
said it over and over again. But there was one thing that irritated me. Just like today we have the pads, back then we had little papers that we would say, please give us your name and address so we can contact you. Please do that. And every Sunday I would get hundreds of new people who came in. 50% of them would be returned to me, oh, saying no such address. People were so frightened. They didn't want to put their real name down. And it was too much. I mean, sometimes it really got in the way of things. But I would get up in church and say the obvious, and everybody would laugh. I'd say, please give us your real name and your real address. You're wasting money here on these postage stamps and envelopes. Help me out a little bit. But I learned it wasn't. You know, some folks are just very, very nervous. And I remember finally when we started taking people in Sunday after Sunday. And as we took new members in, I remember one day a few people, like I said, didn't want to use their real name. And one young man came up to me. And I had to explain to him, no, I will not be taking you into the church as Daffy Duck. Forget it. Amen. <laughs> Either you give me your real name or you don't get to join. Amen. We do have some Daffy Ducks in church sometimes, though. Amen. I get that way sometimes. Amen. Oh, my goodness. But the thing that I learned right off the bat was this. In all things, give praise. Give thanks to God. The second revelation that I received in MCC, because like I said, that first Sunday, I didn't have all the answers. And the next thing that happened was one of my Pentecostal friends, one of my best friends came up. And he said, now I want to talk to you about Scripture. And he said, I want to know what Scripture says. What does Scripture say? And I remember that I really went to God in prayer and I said, God, you've got to teach me. I've got people coming here to hear me. I know what you've given me and you've told me you loved us. But Lord, you've got to tell me, help me here. And you know what God said to me? Reread my word. That was revelation number two. Now, I'd read scripture since I was a little kid. I was raised in a Southern Baptist Pentecostal household. Those two churches read scripture. Amen. Any of you who came through those know without a shadow of a doubt, that's exactly what they do. And I remember that I really, really read Scripture, reread it to see what it said. And oh, you know, when people walk up usually and they say, what does the Bible say? That's loaded question number one. Amen. Just the way they asked you the question. Now, this young man hadn't, but I've had those kind of people come up to, what does it say? And I always say, well, let's see. For God so loved the world that God gave the only begotten Son, that whosoever, if they're heterosexual, believe in Jesus, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. What they inferred, they wrote it right into Scripture. It's not what Scripture said at all. Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Scripture and are heterosexual. They are the sons and daughters of God. Next one, John 1, 12. But as many as received Jesus, to them gave Jesus power to become the daughters and sons of God, even to them that believed on Jesus' name, if they're heterosexual. You know what? They inferred it all the time. And we got used to their, what they inferred till we thought that's what it said. But you know something? That's what the scripture didn't say. Amen. God said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Amen. From Jeremiah 1.5, Genesis 1.26 and 27 tells us we're all, A-L-L, -L, made in the image of God. Amen. Psalms 139, I may shout around here in a minute, amen. I'll tell you, when I get to these scriptures, tells us we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and all the days of our lives are known to God, amen. I want to tell you something. 
One on the day you were born. You know, God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. God, uh, we're not like the jack in the box. Amen. All at once, we come out of our mother's womb. We jump out, and God jumps back and says, Oh, my God, little homosexual. Amen. <laughs> God doesn't do that. Amen. God knew who we were before we were even born. <laughs> know it and believe it. In everything, give thanks. Last revelation. God told me, said to say it to the church too. Don't be afraid. Fear, the number one, or number one killer of people. Fear. Fear of tomorrow. Fear that somebody's going to leave us. Fear somebody's going to walk away. Fear the government's going to have us arrested. That fear. Oh, my goodness. Every once in a while, I have somebody who says to me, uh, you know, after church, usually, Reverend Perry, I want you to pray for me. I've been going through hell. And I always tell them, don't stop. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Get to the other side. Amen. <laughs> Get to the other side. Don't stop. See, we don't have to be afraid of the future. I want to tell you a little story this morning about a heterosexual woman who arrived at Metropolitan Community Church. Her nephew was attending MCC, and he said to her one day, Aunt June, you've got to go to church with me. He said, you think the Seventh-day Adventist Church is something? Why do you see Metropolitan Community Church? I want you to go to church with me. And June Norris walked into Metropolitan Community Church. She was the fourth heterosexual who joined Metropolitan Community Church. And I got to tell you something. When she got in the church, she got excited. And here was that woman. Oh, she still looked like that seven-day Adventist with that seven-day Adventist hair like Pentecostals, you know, the... <laughs> That Pentecostal hairdo, hair 15 feet tall, the women wear. You know. Here she was. One of our choir members told me his experience as a kid of cutting up from his Pentecostal background about one of the sisters and the way she'd shake her hair. And only he and I would know what that meant, but I, I, I've got to tell you, I just slapped it. Here was June. June, this quiet spoken woman who just loved people. June, who got all excited. June, who joined Metropolitan Community Church. June, who went back to work where she was a nurse at White Memorial Hospital here in this city, Seventh-day Adventist Hospital. June, who went back and said, I had such a move of the Holy Spirit. God bless me, and I've joined a church, and it's called Metropolitan Community Church. And that hospital fired her as a heterosexual for joining Metropolitan Community Church. This is a heterosexual I'm talking about. This is not a gay, a lesbian, or a bi or transgendered person coming out of the closet. This is a heterosexual woman who came out of the closet about joining Metropolitan Community Church. Juno didn't care. She got another job. She turned that over to the Lord, amen. And then the Lord started dealing with her. And she came to me and said, Reverend Perry, God has called me to preach. And I want to join the ministry of Metropolitan Community Church. And I immediately sent her. And I'm, I'm so glad Don Peterson's here this morning. He and I were talking, Reverend Peterson back there. And we were, we were talking, and I was thinking about Samaritan, that little school we had years ago. Wasn't accredited or anything else, but that's when they wouldn't let us go to seminary. June Norris went to Samaritan College. She first went to Hollywood High School and got her high school diploma. And then she joined our little seminary and was trained there. Then she started pastoring. June was persecuted over and over and over again. June Norris, when she went to Raleigh, North Carolina, June was so smart. She went back to, she 
attended classes, got a degree, but she also was chaplain, one of the chaplains at the school. And one day the ROTC, it, they circulated and they decided who was going to pray at the ROTC meeting for their graduation. And it fell on her the way they did it. And ROTC, the Army back then said, not here. We don't want anybody who's from Metropolitan Community Church. We don't care that she's heterosexual. She's not going to get to pray. Isn't that funny how people don't get the will of God in their heads? They don't even want us to pray for them. Amen. I believe in prayer. So did June. I've got to tell you something. June Norris believed in prayer. When we have nothing else, we have prayer. Amen. When things get exciting, we have prayer. That's the one thing I claim over and over and over. I said, don't get mad, Troy Perry. Don't get even. Go to God in prayer. Amen. Let's get this cleaned up. In June, I'll tell you, she went on. She was the assistant pastor of our church, her last church, in San Diego, California. In June, she and I always saw each other. Every time I went down there, I'd go by and see June. And every time she came up here, we had lunch or dinner together. We always did it. This wonderful, heterosexual woman that loved Jesus and loved every one of you. And I've got to tell you, finally, uh, it was time for the Lord to take her home. She had cancer of the lungs. And uh, it was a bad cancer, but you know what? She never quit smiling. And finally, she was in hospice care in her home. And uh, when I got down there, that last time, she was already unconscious. And I had prayer with her. And really, my heart was just broken. I thought, Lord, how thankful I am for this woman who has been so good, who has suffered just like we have. Amen. Just like we have. Her pastor got there before I did while she was still conscious. And he said, June, we need to talk about your funeral. Amen. We all do that. Amen. As you get older, you'll discover this. Amen. <laughs> Even when your partner doesn't want to hear it. Amen. And I'll tell you, June, the pastor came in and said, June, what do you want sung at your funeral? And she said, oh, surprise me. I thought that was such a great, great answer to him. She didn't care. She was already going over on the other side. Amen. Just surprised me. And we sung at her funeral, You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You will see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you. Always come follow me, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk among the burning flames, you shall not be hurt. If you stand before the powers of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Blessed are you, poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked men insult and hate you, all because of me, blessed, Blessed are you, be not afraid. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. And that last verse, blessed are your poor, I've already read it, praise the Lord. Amen. Be not afraid, I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. What I love about God is this. When we read the Word of God, and I'm going to close with this, amen. 
is I love that the first book of the Bible, Genesis, tells us, and the Lord God formed humanity out of the dust of the ground and breathed into humanity the breath of life, and we became a living soul. We became a living soul. In the book of Revelation, I'd read this scripture over and over again. Yet it was somebody in this congregation who pointed this scripture out of me and God gave me new eyes to see something to Troy Perry and to you too. Book of Revelations 10, 1 through 4. I saw another powerful angel come down out of heaven and this one was clothed with a cloud and a rainbow over the angel's head. Our rainbow angel. Amen. Amen. Our rainbow angel. The angel face was like the sun, and the angel's legs were like columns of fire. And within the angel's hand, a little book opened. And the angel stood with one foot upon the sea and one upon the land. And the angel shouted with the sound of a growling lion. I was about to write down what it said, but a voice from heaven shouted, Keep it a secret! Don't write these things. See, I believe that God was already talking about us. Angels, rainbows, my children, all my children, everybody, all of us. So on this 47th anniversary, of the founding of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. In everything, give thanks. God bless you this morning.
Psalm 126, 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. This is, will be the last time I address you as a member of your board of directors. My uh, term is up and like so many before, when my turn is over, I step down. I just want to thank, thank all of you for the amazing honor it has been to be in this. And I, I hope that we have laughed along the way, that we've had a good time. There is a lot of healing power in laughter. And I pray that we spend more time laughing and less time arguing because laughter is so much more than what Sigmund Freud called it. Sigmund Freud called laughter the guilt-free release of aggression. Laughter is a very healing thing and let's remember that as time goes on. In the meantime, the ministry of this church goes on. We so much need your gifts, your ties, your offerings. This is a difficult time for our church, and we're having to make difficult decisions about finance and, and uh, where we're headed. So I'm asking you to please give generously. Thank you. As we prepare in-house for communion today, I would like to invite the people who are worshiping online with us to get your bread and your juice now so that when we consecrate communion, yours can be consecrated with us. 
and let us pray. Our way. You call us to celebrate your peace in a world which worships war, to celebrate your freedom in the face of oppression, to celebrate the seed of faith planted in the doubts of our hearts. Our life. You would have us celebrate the safe ground of hope emerging from the flood of our tears. Celebrate those who love us in the midst of hurt and hatred. Celebrate our salvation as we struggle with sin of ourselves and others. Our truth. You teach us to celebrate our new life in the gift of the risen Christ, to celebrate the grace of your heart which melts our fears, and to celebrate all our moments that are cradled in your hands. Our way, our truth, our life. We lift our prayers to you, singing as Jesus has taught us. Considered too rough for their smooth plans, the builders cast out the stone they needed. But God builds salvation on the one who is the foundation for all, for all hope. In a moment of silence on this anniversary Sunday, let us confess our sins to one another, trusting we will not be put to shame. Will you please join me in our community prayer for forgiveness? As our community ebbs and flows with your spirit over the years, hear the brokenness that remains in our lives, precious God. We cover our ears so we cannot hear the cries of those in need. Or you urging us to respond. We rush together to defend every issue that matters to us but quickly, quickly disperse, disperse when you would call us to be your holy people. We shout as loud as we can to cheer on our sports teams, but can manage only whispers when it comes to sharing the good news. Forgive us, our eternal guide, and do not hold our sins against us. We lay the garments of our foolishness at your feet, so you might clothe us in grace and hope. We would feed on the spiritual food which flows from your heart so we might be able to long enough to follow Jesus as he leads us in the way, the truth, and the life. God in community, holy and one. Amen. You are no longer alone. You are God's beloved. You are of this world, but residents God, of God. <laughs> You who once had no hope have been filled with forgiveness. Each one of us, all of us, 
have received God's mercy in Christ. Forgiven, redeemed, constantly made whole. We are the people made one in faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. The great prayer of thanksgiving. May the God of every way be with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts to the one who is the truth for God's own people. We, we offer, offer them, them to the, the one who warms, warms them, them with love. Sing praises to God who is our life. Glad that songs are offered, offered to the one who provides passion. shelter for us. You made a way through chaos constructing God. The word echoing on mountaintops and whispering in valleys. The spirit teaching songs to the stars, breathing life into those created in your image as precious, precious children. You longed to cradle us in your lap, breastfeeding us with grace and hope. But we slipped out of your grasp, covering our ears as you called us to come back to you. Prophets came to remind us that you would not put us to shame. Psalmists sang to us of your longing to cut the net of sin and death and set us free. But together we rushed into the open arms of temptation. Then you sent Jesus, so that in knowing and believing in him, we would know and believe in you. So with those who have nothing and those who give everything away, we lift our voices to you singing the Santo. to be taken from us, where he gathered with his disciples in the upper room, taking the bread from the table, he blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you, and each time you eat of it, remember me. Likewise, in a similar manner, he took a cup from the table. Some say it was the Elijah cup, to be touched by no one other than the Messiah. But Christ took the cup and again raised it, and he blessed it, and said, this is the cup of salvation, my blood that is poured out for the new covenant. Drink of this often and do so in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? Once we were nobodies, alone and hopeless, but by your mercy, living God, we are now a family. Gathered in your love around this table where the spirit sanctifies the bread and the cup, you lean over to serve us the bread enveloping us into the grace that we might be able to be your people. You offer us the cup of hope, which can be healed, our troubled hearts, and strengthen us to serve the world. And when the way leads us home, when your life gathers us with our sisters and brothers around the table, which is prepared by your truth, we will sing the songs of gladness and praise to you forever. Amen. Amen. Here at Founders MCC, just like all MCCs throughout the world, and we've been doing it for 47 years, we offer an open table and an open communion. And what that is, you don't need to be a member of this church or any church to take part in the meal this morning. In just a few moments, ushers will guide you to the front of the altar, where there will be servers to guide, servers to be there to serve you and to give you a prayer. They'll take an element with a host and they'll dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice and they'll place it upon your tongue. Or if you wish, you may take and serve yourself. But once you have done so, the server will then give you a brief prayer of blessing. And if you would like one or the other, please let us know, because we are here to serve you. If you like communion just by yourself this morning and privately between you and your God, there'll be a station of consecrated elements to your right at which you may go to at any time during communion. If you don't wish to receive communion today, that's perfectly fine. You may say right where you are. 
as we always say here, and we've said it for many years, that God will find you right where you are. So as we finish preparing the table this morning, I invite the acolytes and servers to please join us.
direction you're the compass for my way you're the fire and the light when nights are dark and cold and sadness you're the laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold Jesus you're the center of my
So we've got to have some really deep moments of gratitude today. Amen. Witnessing the revelations that God has given to this community through our yes. founder, Troy Perry. Witnessing all the work that God has done through our straight allies and our passion throughout the years. It's yes. been truly amazing for 47 years. Yes. And I'm looking forward to you being here for our 50th Amen. in a couple of years when we celebrate. Amen. So as we go from this place today, let us go knowing that we have God's unconditional love, that yes. we are one of the all, one of the everyone, one of the whosoever. And Amen. anybody who would like to tell us different can talk to Troy. Amen. <laughs> So we've got him and the Lion of Judah to have our back, right? So it's amazing. Let's go ahead and rise in body and spirit for our closing song. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders Metropolitan Community Church offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today, or pick up one of the connection flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us on Facebook. And join us in making Founders Metropolitan Community Church your one-stop spiritual portal. If this is your first Sunday at Founders, you are our guest, and we would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation.